What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3 and straight back into the drama. The drama on the second asteroid. The duplicates are a bit stupid. I don't understand why I have to micromanage them constantly to not die. Um, they are stuck in the really hot area. They want to cool down. So I need to set them as a level 10 to dig that out. They then need to go through the doors of course and get the shite out of there because I don't want them to repair any of that crap I don't care the meteors are causing havoc but as you can see even with the low health they continue to go up to where they shouldn't be Gosman there almost dead very close to being dead Max not so but yeah, there's a lot of health issues here but they refuse to hide now I'd like to get them on the other side of the doors and then I'll lock the doors and they can't get out Yeah, but it don't work. They continue to walk through them, and it doesn't matter whether I set left or right or both off. They still try and go through the doors, and then when I try and lock the doors so they physically can't get out of them, some idiot goes through and gets locked out. Because why wouldn't you? Now, really, they shouldn't be able to get up here and out of here without going through the atmosphere suit thing anyway. So I need to block this whole path. Um, the, the, the the door that is up to these ladders needs to be turned off so that the only way they can get here is by walking round with an Atmos suit on and then none of this would be a problem. Setting this as level 10 to lock it should be the first thing that any duplicate does, right? No. He walks through it. And then they lock it and now he's trapped forever. Th th honestly. Th now, I'm not going to bore you with it because I was micromanaging this for a very long time. Uh, nobody died. Don't panic. However, this cabbage, Rowan, got locked out again. He's very close to dying. He's now got nowhere to go. I've locked the doors for the seventh time. I don't even know. So you know what I'm going to do? Yes, I'm going to do that. Rowan is going home. So I will set him as a pilot. Tell the crew to join. Launch the rocket. Send him home and just forget about it. He'll land at home. Get himself teleported over to one of the hospitals and recuperate there. And the four duplicates remaining will, of course, carry on the slog. Now, I can and will send them over some rovers to see if they help. But it turns out rovers are really shite at digging. There's so much stuff they can't dig, it's unbelievable. So, I I'm not sure they're great. I mean, even the bio bots, I don't know if anybody else has noticed it yet. But they are so sudden slow. Um, but they are free. They, well, not free, sorry. They are, once you've built them, they are just relentless. They don't sleep, they don't eat, they don't breathe. So, yeah, th there's ways around it, right? Um, oxygen wise, we're good. You can see the base is looking good as well. The hydrogen is flowing through them gaps at the top. So everybody's contempt happy, which means I'm contempt and happy. So yeah, the second asteroid, it's looking at, I probably should use its name, but at this point, it's just the second asteroid, right? Maybe the third or fourth plus asteroids, I'll start trying to use some names, or at least give them nicknames. So we do need to get this built in now to uncover some more asteroids to see where we're going to go next. Also, we need to push our way out because the temporal shift, which is the end game, could be in any direction, I don't know. Hopefully we get lucky and we don't have to uncover the entire galaxy, but... We'll see. Um, you can just fly around, actually, as long as you've got m plenty of oxygen food and various other things. And there is a actual part of a rocket you can... A satellite that you can put on a rocket as you're flying around it and covers more land. So that may be a way to go. But we'll see. At the minute, we're, we're still looking for resources from various places. So I'm going to stick with that. Don't get a chance to do a time-lapse very often, so I thought while I'm waiting for this to just go, I'll just give you a quick blitz here. It shouldn't take many seconds just to see everybody working very, very hard at getting these different things done and the planet passing there in the background, which looks quite cool. Uh, effectively here, they're building the pipes, the power lines, and the, what's it called, transit tube. 
uh, in order to make the three locations, the three rocket platforms more accessible, uh, wired in, plumbed in, etc, etc. So that's my setup kind of done. Obviously, still the time lapse. Most of them cables got put in, and the pipes got put in, so the duplicates can get here quicker. With the radiation thing here, I'm just doing some for the sake of it, really. I've just looked at what's close to the as close to the yellow and black as I can, and then I'm just doing a really manual checkered pattern there as like a quote-unquote warning radiation. Uh, it does nothing. It's just visual, and it I like it. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Oddly enough, I do the same with um, Minecraft as well. Funny enough, again, mentioning that game. Yeah, and then the launcher there, just surrounding that. Oh, sorry. Behind that, I am putting just white. Now, we will be using these when we need to, but I'm not going to send stuff for the sake of it. Uh, and until I've got a sort of a more confined setup, I, I, I don't want to start just firing random crap into random places. This is more for the very far distanted... Uh, planets that we need to set up on so that I don't need to send someone thousands and thousands of miles for like six or seven cycles each way I can just send the goods one way and then the one or two people that are on the said uh, asteroid can receive them hopefully before they die depending on what we're sending uh, oxygen and water though I would like to think well certainly oxygen I would like to think I won't need to send that <laughs> simply because uh, that should be sorted before uh, actually leaving them there and abandoning them on a different asteroid. Now I am wiring in some sweepers. There is one sweeper per pod. And then at the top of the the shield, the heat shield there, the insulated tiles, right at the top, I'm going to put some of the chests. The idea is that then if anything's dropped or left on the floor or when things get delivered uh, and brought back from space, it automatically gets picked up by these and sent into the conveyor belt loader, which is in the main surface base, and then into the into the actual storage of the, of the whole entire base. So yeah, we haven't got there yet, but the, the infrastructure, again, it's infrastructure, it's, it's ready to go. You can see one of them... Um, radiation lamps is currently running the beam there coming out and that gives an additional 50 rads per cycle so instead of 25 per cycle it will now be giving me 75 25 from the vacuum of space and 50 from that lamp so just got the storage things on top as i said they are all sealed so that if we do collect the slime that i said is is actually really useful uh, and they get put in there they will not off gas so we won't lose them. Now, I am going to set up the chests on a sort of a daisy chain. So the idea is the far left one is the lowest, then the middle one's the middle, the, the right one is the highest. And the sweepers can reach the opposite to each other. So the idea is if something gets picked up in that left one, it will automatically get moved to the middle one, which will automatically move to the right one. And then because the belt loader, which is even further to the right, is a higher priority than that, it will then get moved to that and sent to the base. So it daisy chains through the chests um, into the base, effectively. What I need to do is turn them on, of course. So turning them on like so. And then the numbers don't really matter, but obviously that one's going to be number one. This one can be number three, and then the last one can be number five. And then the belt loader can be number seven, let's say. And that way, it'll automatically, the sweepers, when they're powered, will automatically transfer all of them goods into the correct things. So you can see that first one's already working. Sorry, the last one's already working. Now the second one and the third one needs wiring as well. And all it's going to do is pass the goods to the next one along until they all end up and all of these goods that you can see being picked up now are going to end up back in the main storage in the base i should have probably set some sort of limit to the temperature but to be honest on the surface it's all cold stuff not hot so i'm not too worried um, and liquefactables that are in ice form anyway get automatically sorted into a totally different location where you saw them copper tiles that will turn them into a liquid and then drop them in yeah you can see here they're not going to work for me to be honest and 
I'm glad because I don't want to waste uranium doing that when the radiation from space is free. So what I'd rather do is rip those out and just build a crap ton more of the collectors in the space. So instead of having three, uh, I could have, say, seven. I think seven's the maximum you can have around a reflector because, of course, the reflector needs one space. Yeah, something like that. So seven collectors firing into one... Uh, reflector that then fires that rad bolt out of there into another one and then into the actual e, the catapult itself or the sorry interplanetary launcher um, now seven collectors is seven times 450 watts which is a lot so we're going to need another line of power to do so and yes this is all going to be automated i'm going to rip this out to redo it because that was too messy to even bother with uh, the idea being that as soon as it's full, they will all turn off and they're not wasting a lot of power because you, you, you're talking like nearly four kilowatts of power um, just for those. I need to look actually, and if anybody knows, is there an actual way of storing it? Um, I've seen a storage type thing, but I'm not sure it's what I want. Basically, so I can just make as many rad bolts as I want. It gets stored in like a container. Um, and then that container holds, say, a thousand rad bolts, and then they get fired into the interplanetary thing as it drains them. Because the interplanetary machine only holds 200, and once it's full, I have to wait there, and then they have to recharge it and fires and rinse and repeat. But I'd like to be able to store the rad bolts in a storage state, and then basically fire them into it so I can fire like a thousand rad bolts worth of goods into space instead of 200 and then having to wait there is the new engine that I was talking about that is a natural gas engine better than the small petroleum engine in that it has an additional two uh, sorry three uh, high and a bit more power obviously the large petroleum engine I expect is an upgrade and we will get to that as soon as I remember in the series anyway to start using the orbital uh, research facility to make more of the data banks that is coming soon because I did realize at this point when I realized that the, the research was just taking the PI double S for now though we do need to route over some natural gas because we don't actually have any because currently the only uh, fuel we're using is a liquid we are at time though so to see that set up and the natural gas engine which looks fantastic when it's fired uh, the new gra the new thing for that is fantastic uh, you'll have to see on the next episode so thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments are welcome as always subscribe so you don't miss out take care goodbye